Welcome to the Spy Collection. This is Anastasius and here I have with me an escape and invasion map from the United Kingdom. One of the so-called silk maps. The use of silk escape and invasion maps started in 1918 during the First World War by Australian forces to assist prisoners of war in German camps to escape. They were sewing those maps inside their clothing and thus allowing them to find their way out once they got the opportunity. This escape and invasion technique continues to be used to this day by many nations, but it was during the Second World War when the United Kingdom made it a standard and from there it grew to all the Allied forces and eventually to the rest of the world. In the 1930s and 1940s, UK's War Office was supporting this capability via the Director of Military Operations and Intelligence, also known as DMONI. Under the DMONI there was an organization known as GSGS, which was an abbreviation for Geographical Section General Staff. However, within the UK's intelligence community, it was simply referred to as the MI4, Military Intelligence Section 4. This agency was performing aerial reconnaissance and interpretation. It's worth noting that after several organizational changes, MI4 was settled in Seltenham, the current home of GCHQ, and as technology achievements moved into the satellite imagery, GPS and remote sensing, MI4 was absorbed into the aerial reconnaissance unit of GCHQ. And as you can see here, This map is coming from GSGS. It is the 5th edition. If we move to the lower right side, we can find some additional information. It says that it is based on the 4th edition of a 1945 map which was revised and reproduced in 1951, apparently by adding either missing information or updating it based on things that have changed since 1945. To make those maps as efficient as possible, MI4 was printing them on both sides. So everything I mentioned here was about this side that was for Sinop. On the other side, we have Ankara, Turkey. And if we check the lower side of this one, it is a little bit older. It is coming from a map based in 1944. Those maps were provided to forces operating behind enemy lines and thus being more likely to have to escape from those areas. For example, the Royal Air Force and the Special Operations Executive, the SOE. Unlike civilian navigation maps, these also included things such as military installations. For example, if we go back, we'll find that it has additional information that were provided by the Royal Air Force and include things such as airfields, landing grounds and so on. The map also includes details that would be crucial for military personnel that try to escape like ground characteristics and city details such as telegraph lines, lighthouses, railways and so on. It even has a small glossary so that it is easier to comprehend different city names, village names and so on. When someone is taught land navigation, one of the first things to do is to discover the magnetic north variation since the compass shows the real magnetic north. However, in an escape invasion situation, you don't want to make things harder than they are. This is why this information is already available in the map. It even explains that there is an annual change of about 3 degrees east 
and the recording is from 1953. For this exact same reason, there is also a conversion scale from meters to feet to allow someone to better plan the route. The map also includes time zones of different areas and even instructions on how to give a position reference as you can read over here. In terms of concealment, I already mentioned the one of sewing them inside the clothes of the operators, but this isn't the only one. Others including hide them in packages like food rations, shoes, and there are even some more innovative methods that I might share in a separate video. As these escape and evasion techniques became more widely known, a standard operating procedure was to strip down prisoners of war from all their clothing, but even then, those maps could easily be hidden in humanitarian packages and being made from fabric, they had no issues with being wet or covered with some other material. All of those are reasons why they are still in use today in, of course, a more modernized version, but the principle remains the same. Nothing is as it seems.